minds. If a one says enough, 12 into 52, I didn't know how to express it. I had tears of gratitude. 12 reviews before we started Bangalore. If one course is enough, I had 12 reviews with Alma Mater. 21 top gears. If one top gear is enough, he has given me many more. And it's begin, it's continue, it keep on happening. Instantly I had a line of tears. I raised my hand in gratitude. And after that, hold towards in the mastermind only what linger was. If once is enough, and even if we can't have that, there's so much dissatisfaction. I have got so much in life. Whether the question of dissatisfaction is only a spiritual delight, it's a soulful delight for me. And that's what I have been living with Alma Mater and Rajan. And I'm feeling very grateful about it. Thank you so much. Love you so much. Love you so much, Deepu. And I asked this question to Aparish once. He said, for 40 years, I have not missed exercise a single day in my life. If you come and see me at 5 o'clock, I am tying my shoelace, he said. But I knew Aparish had cardiac problems. I knew Aparish had BP. I know Aparish had some joint pain. So I asked Aparish, so how do you explain 40 years of not having missed exercise a single day and you have all this? And Aparish said, think if I have not exercised. I won't be alive enough for you to have a discussion with me. Only because I exercise, I am able to handle all this and move on. Of course, Aparish being Aparish, he said, but do you realize in all these things, I have never had a Daridra disease, no cold, no fever, heart attack. Maybe. So, so see, something only specialists can deal with me. Ordinary doctors can't meet me also. So I follow abundance in all form. No daridra chinta, he said. I wish I didn't have to even speak after you spoke. I think you said a lot then what could be said. Thank you so much. A lot has happened, a lot is happening. I don't even know what to share and what not to share, so I'll take some questions. I had a beautiful program in Hyderabad last Sunday evening. We had a very happy program on love. Sometimes you never know. You can't, at least in my case, I can't pre-decide the direction of my speech. So the same program could have gone on as a very emotional program. People could have all cried, but instead the program turned out to be a very happy program on love. And the entire program was worth it because two things happened. One, a brother, immediately after the program, it seems, had gone outside and called his brother with whom he has not spoken for 12 years and asked him to immediately come to the auditorium. And both of them came and hugged me and went. And I really think that was enough for the entire program. Two brothers have found each other. I wish Ambani's were there in that program. <laughs> I think that was enough for me as far as the program is concerned. But it was a very different experience because I finished the program at 9 o'clock and when I hugged the last person it was 11.20 in the night. One, I surprised myself that you stood there and kept hugging because it doesn't happen in the world. They hug the first 10 rows, no, first two rows and they leave. But I was thinking about them. They were willing to stand in that queue and one at a time till 11.20 it went on it was such a beautiful little ones big ones fat ones in their arms I was lost okay but very fulfilling experience Friday we had mastermind in Coimbatore had gone to Coimbatore he has somehow taught that entire crowd to laugh like him Satya so they all have this loud reverberating laughter so it, again it was a very very happy mastermind I have something else to share. I'll probably take the question that has come and then probably end the mastermind sharing something else.
how to avoid bad thoughts during meditation. That itself is very good. You know you are getting bad thoughts. You know so many of them sitting here, they don't even know. They get bad thoughts and they don't even know those thoughts are bad. evolution Because till the end, Duryodhana never understood. He had bad thoughts. In fact, when I look at most people, I can only go back to that scene in that movie, Gemini, where Vikram and that person's name, I don't know. Kala Bhavan Mani. That Kala Bhavan Mani. And that Mirga Mirga Marla Pandi Kampan. A scene that I remember. For me, his icon is, in one movie, they will keep a cracker behind his ass and light it. And it will start bursting. Then he will say, oh, this is what is called backfiring, is it? <laughs> so that's what I remember as far as he is concerned. But he is the villain there in the movie. So he is one Dada. Vikram is another emerging Dada. And the IG would have kept both of them inside. So Vikram will tell this big bad guy that we will tell the IG that we will change. We will correct ourselves and from now onwards give us the chance to live a new life. So, we will tell you that we are wrong. 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 What mistake have we done for us to correct ourselves? We are wrong. And the very, not many people know that they get thoughts only. Then comes bad thoughts. So this itself is evolution that you are observing. Just keep watching. The law of consciousness is in consciousness anything life negative will shrink and anything life positive will expand. You can't fight your thoughts because you are fighting your thoughts with your thoughts. Thoughts as a negation to thoughts is only more thoughts. It doesn't negate anything. Watch. Watch you are saying. Step back. Watch. Let it come and go. Just watch. This awareness that you are getting bad thoughts will slowly fade away those bad thoughts. Nothing else is required. Just watch. Be a witness. Thoughts will come and go. Some more will come and go. It's like you are taking off from earth into the skies in your aircraft. Everything looks clouds, clouds, clouds everywhere. You can't even see the sky. Keep flying, keep flying. At some altitude you will find... There are a lot of clouds here and there, but in between you can see the skies. So still a lot of thoughts will be there, but in between there will be gaps. Keep flying, keep flying. There is an altitude where you reach. Here and there. One there, one here. Some clouds are there, but predominantly you see the skies. A point comes when most of the time you are in silence, but there is an occasional invasion of thought. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And the time comes, you experience a cloudless sky. There is an altitude of consciousness from which there is nothing impure, there is nothing negative to contaminate you, your being anymore. You experience the purest form of everything, not just silence. The purest form of love, the purest form of bliss, the purest form of selfless intent, the purest form of vibrations, for the first time you know what divine, the word actually means purity in all forms. For the first time you experience that. And there is an altitude in consciousness from which you experience this. So just keep progressing. As long as you know you are growing consciously and law of consciousness being automatically everything life positive will be expanded in your life and automatically everything life negative will be shrunken from your life. As long as you can remain a witness unto yourself and keep watching yourself, everything happens. How do I keep high energy levels throughout the day? We teach this even to children. The first point is not a point that all of you will like, but I'll say it. The closer you rise to sunrise, the higher will be your energy levels. Ideally, you should rise and only then the sun should rise. You should beat the sun on a daily basis. You should get up and then the sun should come up. Ideally. But because you always want me to tell you something practically. 
closest to sunrise the more you wake up post sunrise the lesser will be your energy levels because the primary source of physical energy is the sun two because i know who has asked this question i am saying this as an answer i wouldn't have said the same answer to see the entire source of physical energy is the entire greenery collecting the sun's energy and through the process of photosynthesis storing that sun's energy as chlorophyll which means the purest form of physical energy is in the greenery so the closer you eat to greenery and the lesser it is cooked greater is the source of energy so you need to ensure that your diet is more energizing food than energy draining food what is the difference between an energizing food and an energy draining food a energy draining food is one where the energy required to digest the food is higher than the energy supplied by the food this is like you spending 10000 rupees to earn 8000 rupees bad model so the more a food is cooked and the more the food is away from green greater is the consumption of that energy for the digestion of that food so which means digestion as a process rather than leaving you with energy leaves you energy drain that's why many of you where immediately after you eat you will feel tired you feel bulky you feel sleepy unda kalaip you feel like going basically it has nothing to do with the food energy draining food the more and more i live my life with energizing food where the energy that was consumed to digest the food is so minimum and the energy released by the food is so much that it energizes you so which means closer you go to green and what else you can eat which is raw semi cooked or steam cooked nutritionally cooked rajan <laughs> lele see listen listen holy okay if that can be the most dominant food you eat and punctuation is the all the brown ones all the fried ones cooked ones adu nanchala vera onnu mechal adu let's write a lot of sentences occasionally use punctuation then it will be beautiful to read too much punctuation kama 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 in one word is there how to read lot of words one kama quote 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 inside some quote should be there no <laughs> simply quote alone you can't keep so somewhere if we can ensure health conscious food is the dominant diet and tongue conscious food is the distractions that we have then you get your life right so that becomes the physical source of energizing yourself this we already discussed in the class the body operates on a biorhythm so somewhere where there is a consistency into the physical attributes of your life waking up when the variation is not more than plus or minus 15 minutes going to sleep when the variation is not more than plus or minus 15 minutes your breakfast lunch dinner and the in between meals somewhere when there is a time rajan but there will be there will be times exception should be an exception exception should not become the rule there will be times where you will not be able to control it but there are a lot of times it can be controlled when there is a consistency to the physical attributes then the biorhythm in your system operates much better when the biorhythm is perfect in your system it energizes your life when the biorhythm is half a sad in your life it energy drains you in life so can you bring that biorhythm which brings us back to that point a time for everything everything in its time exceptions will be there but to a very large extent if you can discipline your life and these are from the physical sources of energy then there is a psychic source of energy maybe i'll not be able to do complete justice to that subject right now but the psychic source of energy is the seven chakras in the body the energy centers from which energy unlocks there are a lot of processes by which the psychic energy in a man can be released animals don't have psychic energy they purely live out of a physical source of energy man can tap into that psychic source of energy 
There are many ways to unlock that psychic source of energy. One of them as simple as is to be able to chant Aum properly. Because the sound of Aum travels from the Muladhara Chakra through all the seven chakras hammering it once. Or chanting a Gayatri Jabam the way a Gayatri Jabam has to be chanted. And I am sure there must be some chanting, some ritual in every religion. But it has to be in a native language. It cannot be in English. English is a bland language. It doesn't have the highs and lows in the language itself. It has to be Hebrew. It has to be Arabic. It has to be Sanskrit. It has to be Pali. It has to be that native language where a native language has been used. Not the derived languages which came subsequently. Where the language itself... For example, there is hardly nasal tone in English. English doesn't have a nasal tone at all. Yeah, some of you out of cold might speak through the nose. But the language by itself doesn't have a nasal tone. And without a nasal tone, you will never be able to unlock energy from your Vishuddhi, Agni and Sahasra. Energy unlocking will never happen. And these are the higher chakras. Which means your creativity will never manifest itself. Your intuitive abilities will never manifest itself. Your spiritual connectivity will never happen. You can do puja on a daily basis. You can go to a temple on a daily basis. But unless there is energy unlocking from here, you will not be able to experience that spiritual connect. Which means your higher energies are not even manifesting themselves if you live with a language where there is no nasal tone. So as simple as probably chanting an Aum, where A hammers the bottom three chakras, O hammers, there is an intersection there. It hammers the three, four and five. And mm, the nasal tone hammers the top three chakras. There is an energy unlocking that happens through which you tap into that psychic source. Most of the physical attributes of ritual in religion. Anga Pradeshnam. Rolling your body continuously unlocks energy from all the chakras. Namas. When you go through that entire thing of bending and raising, you unlock energy. Sevikarda. When you do it so many times, you unlock energy. Most of those physical attributes, but the physical dimension is gone. We all have come into an ERT you now. We double click the mouse and there is a Ganesha there and there it does one RT there and Abdi A chair Labdi Ogandana Port Kumudu Port Abdila Majamave Panano the law. For example, temples were always big. They expected you to always walk around the temple. Every time the heel hammers the ground. And because traditionally you don't wear footwear into a place of worship. So when you go around, let's say the entire Srirangam temple once, and your heel all the time hammering onto that hard granite, with every hammering it unlocks energy from the Muladhara chakra, the bottom chakras open up. So any physical dimension that was part of religion was always brought in there to unlock. That is why those of you who have gone through the Periyapada will probably realize this, others will not realize. In fact, by the time you travel the entire Periyapada and finally reach the Sanctum Sanctorium there, in fact, you feel more energized and not tired. Because in the entire process there has been energy unlocking of your heel walking through the whole thing. Of course, only on barefoot you will be able to experience that whole thing, not otherwise. Same thing if any one of you has ever rolled your body through a temple. When you get up, you feel even more, you don't feel energy drained because there is an energy that unlocks from all the chakras. In ways you wouldn't have realized, those of you who have danced in a discotheque not for 20 minutes, those of you who danced in a discotheque for two and a half hours, for three hours, you'll find after three hours you feel energized, you don't feel tired, you feel a lot more energized. Those of you who have been jogging on a regular basis will know this. Jogging does not energy drain you, in fact it energizes you because you're all the time landing on your heel which hammers the bottom chakras. There are many ways to do it. The simplest way and the neutral way to teach in a forum like this is by chanting Aum, you unlock energy from all your chakras. And of course, of all the creations of God, man alone has this great blessing that he can stay connected to a spiritual source and thereby draw that existential energy to unfold through him. Man need not live his life by his own energy. Man can live his life through that existential source of 
energy. Alargilla in the light line. This is not part of man building. This is a genuine failure, electrical failure. This is not a Mani Ratna PC Stiram effect. It's a genuine lighting failure. Okay. Like one child in Pune asked me, Why do you have a pen? Why do you have a pen? Why do you have a pen? हर फोटो में आप झूठा करता है पेन को बेटा एक ही फोटो लिया हर जगह वही फोटो रखता है लोग समा आई वॉन्ट टू लुक लाइक आई एम थिंकिंग अरे पूछ पट्टा मैन अलोन कैन गेट कनेक्टेड टू एन एक्सिस्टेंशियल सोर्स ऑफ एनर्जी In fact, that is why in almost every religion, before you come out, you raise your hands in prayer. You never know when. It can be today, it can be tomorrow, it can be one day. But somewhere it's easiest to connect to that existential source of energy with your hands raised in prayer in a way that the fingers don't touch each other. Like you go on telling the child, Amma chole, Amma chole, Amma chole. You never know when. But one day it clicks and the child says, Amma. And similarly, when you keep raising your hands to connect to that existential source, you never know when, but a connect happens. And whenever that happens, from then onwards, you are no more living your life with your private source of energy. The energy that is running this entire existence becomes available to run your life. When an energy that can run the entire existence is now available to run your life, from there it's a beginning of a very new life. So physical source of energy, psychic source of energy, a spiritual source of energy. So those of you from the batches, after you finish all the chanting, after you do everything, before you express your gratitude to the entire process, before you come out of the process, if you can hold your hands raised in prayer in such a way that the fingers don't touch each other for some time, Nothing will happen for some time. But after a moment, everything will begin to happen because the connect happens. And from there, you are no more living your life out of your private source of energy. When we went through the batch, we lost somebody, an extraordinary human being, a human being where in his every vision and every goal and every aspiration that he has towards the future only had the future of the younger generation in his mind. Almost every time he shared in the class, he only said, I want to touch millions of lives, I want to touch millions of lives. In less than half an hour's time, his heart gave in. And he spoke this last sentence, please tell Rajan I am not coming. And we lost him. We just didn't lose a wonderful human being. We lost along with him a vision that he wanted to touch millions of lives. We have lost another. Again to heart attack. Twenty-three years age, heart attack. We have lost another yesterday. I remember going after my mother's surgery to meet Dr. Girinath. Yeah, he was very arrogant. Leave it. Something comes with certain profession. But when I went to see him, I was 81 kgs, 36 and a half waistline. And before he told me anything about the mother, he said, you are the next candidate for heart attack. 
And I don't think anybody has to remind me how important is my life, much more than to me, to all of you, and how responsible I should feel towards taking care of this body. Suresh had a motorcycle accident and had a massive head injury. I know we all meditated it for him in the next mastermind. He has fought through everything and come back to life. Remember Vinod Kantet saying, we will see him in a mastermind again. And we have him in a mastermind today. Is it not enough because when he was unconscious and there in the hospital, can you just think about what the family, his two little children, his mother, his wife should have gone through? Should each one of us break our head and then realize the importance of a helmet? Or just that one person who was victimized by life enough for all of us to change? change and transform tanitaniya saavana manamala otta setta porada adile nalla kattuk mudiyada same thing happened for anasam no helmet no i'm going only nearby so i will not wear the helmet is lying in the bed with a head injury. Two weeks back, Baski, no helmet, bike, head injury, lying down there in Muller Hospital. Precious human beings. Spare a thought for the family. In fact, one fellow sitting here, his motorcycle skid when he was doing the course, and he came with a fractured hand. And based on him, I took a promise from everybody in the last, by the end of the year, you will drive your own car. Not for luxury reasons, for your own security. For the sake of the family. Go and sit outside an ICU and see what a family goes through. You are inside, in sedatives and painkillers. Go and just see what a family goes through outside. And everybody bought a car. When I come to this mastermind, I am seeing still that fellow coming in a bike. And for buying a gold jewelry, you will spend time. Nothing against gold jewelry. Entire jewelry market is with me, so I nothing against it. But, <laughs> but security, what are three lakhs you cannot earn, then... The, then there's no relevance to you growing with Alma Mater. If Alma Mater does not teach you to earn another 3 lakhs this year so that you can have a 4-wheeled vehicle for your own security, for security of the family. One child in between, wife in that corner, one child there, one on the petrol pump and you driving. And with your stomach, you are two people, not one. Security. Each one has to go through this again, is it? Abuse a child, abuse a child, academics, 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 goes and commits suicide. The top MBA student from Pune, love failure, has committed suicide. Which means we taught her to be a top academic performer, we didn't teach her life. How many more children do we have to lose in life before we realize in parenting, if you are not making your children understand, we love you more than your performance? Stupid. One day unable to perform, the child will go. Each one of us one at a time cannot go through a loss of another beloved. Somewhere your husband, your wife, your children, your brother, your sister, your team should know we love them first. Then comes performance. We are not at all fitlers where performance alone matters and nothing else matters. Somehow in all the ways your child should know. 
she is more precious to you than her progress report he is more valuable to you than his marks you love him beyond right and wrong the child should know in the heart of the heart of the child no matter what happens mummy is there for me papa is there for me each one of us can't lose one more for us to realize we can't keep paying such prices it's getting huge what do i tell the parents my mark what do i go and tell the parents what do i explain how many more of you would want to continue to practice habits how many more of you think yesterday i was seriously thinking of reinventing my old times and saying for 30 35 people on my terms know this know this know this know this know this and if you are willing to adhere to all this let me invest me on you not otherwise for no you have to get behind my eyeballs you have to get behind my heartbeat you have to get behind my shoes to understand what i am going through i have to go and see the sun this week to talk to him about having lost his father and i have to go and see parents today and speak to them about the son they have lost you continue to sleep you continue to drink you continue to smoke you continue to develop yourself fat you continue to get obese don't take care of your health live for momentary pleasures live for today paathadalla saapdunga kannukku therinjadalla kudinga kaiyila kachadalla pudinga and continue to keep justifying use all your intelligence to justify every habit of yours is right and continue to keep rationalizing and you know with every passing day the phlegm is accumulating you know with every passing day you are panting for breath every third sentence you have to clear your throat breathing is not normal you know it normal diet is making you gastric you know it we have lost somebody am poita what to tell the people who are there and how many more people have to be victimized by life for us to learn our lessons how much more we have to cry before we correct ourselves Thank you so much.